So we we'll start with three basic statements that everybody, every one of you must be making. There is something like, I want a good college. And then I normally ask, how, how do you define a good college? And I, I never get the answer. You can ask yourself when you say that I want a good college, means what? Are you going to call the college good college because you have heard about it? Are you going to call those colleges which are old enough so that they are good? And we at the same time, if I suggest some other college, people say that I haven't heard of it. But the college exists for last 12 years, 15 years. I can, I can understand this statement if the college is just 4-5 years old. But then you haven't heard it because nobody around you has attended that college. You don't know anybody from that college. And we certainly say, no, that's not a good college. I, I can accept the very first statement saying that I want good college. Yes, if you can define it. But I'm certainly not going to accept any such comment when you say that that college is not a good college. Then you are trying to act superior to even the government authorities, right? Because if the college continues, that means it completes, it performs the basic needs, the basic infrastructure requirements, the basic faculty requirements, and the college exists. There are students in that college, those are qualifying, and we just, the parent who is going to be just a month or two old, Sorry for this statement also, because all these parents who are sitting over here, we probably have not studied the process for the last full year. We just awake when the CET results are close by. And then our parentship starts because now we are required to provide the option sequence or guide the child and proceed further. Fine. But then if you would have seen all these things for a year, probably your comment like a good college or bad college could have been very well accepted. Right? So we have so many colleges around Pune, as many as 100 plus colleges under Pune University, around 35-40 colleges in and around Pune, where you can stay at home and go to the college. And of course, these colleges are allotted not randomly, but as per the merit. So I do agree that if you are going to call college as a good college because its cutoffs are high, then also I would say that instead of call, calling that particular college as a good college, I may say that this college has got better students, rank wise. Are you getting my point? The colleges are known because of the students, right? And the career opportunities which are provided that by that college, by that institute, that will matter the most. And of course, rather than we commenting on good college or bad college, it is better to go through the rank list. And where that rank list is available? Of course, it is available on dtmaharashtra.gov.in Unfortunately, those are going to be 1100 plus pages and we are going to talk about all the categories right from open, OBC, all the categories, general, ladies, home university, other university, as many as 35 different categories in which these seats get divided per college, per branch. So we will have to check as where we will get these cutoffs and you will have to do paperwork, yes. Right? Or there are some other choices like cutoff books are available. Another drawback that the parents are always commenting right now is they are going to, this is a general rumor, what, what should I say that? You are simply saying that this time the cutoffs are going to reduce by 10-15 marks. This is what you must have heard. Yeah. Why? Because the CAT result is bad. And why do you accept?
accept these statements. And I again put my point that yes, these parents and students will accept this point because they are just a month old. Because you haven't checked the last year result, you haven't checked the result prior to that, so you don't have any other result to compare. And this media when comes forward and says that this year the result is bad, only 9% students are above 100 marks and only 1% students above 150, what should I say? Because if you look at uh, 2013 results, it was exactly the same result. There were 284,000 students appearing for CET at that time. There were only 23,000 students securing more than 100 marks. And there were 1.5% students securing more than 150 marks. I have all that data. Those who find that this thing is something fishy, you can always contact me. I will provide you with the original cutoff list of director technical education. Under RTI also, if you ask them for 2013 result, believe me, it will not be available till the process gets over. But I do have, and original documents, it's not manipulated. And so we say after four years that this year result is bad. It's not. Number one, compared to last year, it is bad, accepted. Because last year, only 2,60,000 students appeared for C, uh, CET and 26,000 students secured more than 100 marks. Yeah, so it was 10%. This year it is 9%. Last year, above 190, we had 35 students. This year, can we have the next slide? Yeah, yeah. 53 students last year. This is the net comparison. This is the data that we have. And all these documents are with me. The press note after CET results. Right from 2005, I have all the press notes which describe the number of students. And see, 2013 and 2017, it is just the same. I don't have 2015, or rather 14 and 15 because those were based on ZE. Okay, so those are not to be compared. 2013 has one more similarity that at that time also we have CET and ZE combination. 2016 is not in that time. In 2016, the All India seats were allotted on the basis of CET. And 2017, all India seats will be allotted on the basis of Z and that's going to make the difference. That will very well make the difference. And exactly the same situation was there in 2013 when we had uh, state seats on the basis of CET and All India seats on the basis of ZE. We are in 2017. We have some rule changes, yes. We have some eight stages. First of all, I will come back to the merit number because that is now the recent thing tomorrow. You will be getting it. How many merit numbers we have and how to use them is one of the big questions. Say, every student who is appearing for CET as well as ZE will get at least three merit numbers. One is its state merit list number, second is home university merit number and third is all India merit number. These three merit numbers will be there for everyone appearing for CET as well as ZE. Those who appear only for ZE, they will get only all India. Those who appear only for CET, they will have state merit list number as well as home university merit number. Now, if it is a ladies candidate, girl candidate, appearing for CET and ZE, she will have state merit number, she will have home university merit number, she will have state ladies merit number, she will have home university ladies merit number and all India merit number, five. And here is an example for the OBC candidate from uh, a ladies OBC candidate. 
she will have state merit number she will have home university merit number she will have state ladies merit number she will have home university ladies merit number she will have state obc merit number she will have home university obc ladies merit number she will have state obc ladies merit number she will have home university ladies obc merit number and on india so many merit numbers and with these merit numbers we are required to predict what we are going to get factually speaking only two merit numbers matter that is state general merit number and all india the remaining numbers are just going to give you the information as how many students could be ahead of you in your own university in your own category and believe me in last 5 years this percentage has not changed i can tell you the formula even for that also 